So in previous video, we have seen the PV diagram for a pure fluid and we have seen that how a fluid behaves as the pressure changes at a constant temperature. We also discussed about critical behavior of a fluid and how to determine the critical properties of a given fluid. In this particular video, we are going to see two things. One is the cubic equation like equation of state for single phase which is liquid and then we will start discussing about a very well known equation of state in the you know vapor region which is virial equation of state. So see pressure volume temperature these three terms are associated with each other via an equation and we have already seen that for a single phase fluid out of this three we can define any two based on the degree of freedom because your degree of freedom is 2 minus pi plus n. So, for a pure species n is 1 and for a single phase pi is 1 making 2 minus 1 plus 1 making degree of freedom equal to 2. So, out of this three we can define any two variables and can calculate the remaining. So, we can define p and t and calculate p or v and t and calculate p or p and v and calculate t. So, let us try to see that how to develop an equation which relates the third parameter to the remaining two. Right. So, the, the relationship between p v t is known as equation of state because it will tell you which state the fluid is existing. <coughs> the simplest of such equation of state we know is ideal gas which is p v is equal to r t. Right, and if we want to do that, let's say for example, we want to generate an equation for a liquid phase or for that matter any fluid, we can write the property as a function of other two parameters. So, V is function of temperature and pressure. I differentiate it, you know, with respect to temperature and pressure partially. So, getting the total differential of V, which can be written as this. And if I define two terms one is volume expansivity which is nothing but this how volume changes with temperature at constant pressure so with uh, at a constant pressure the volume naturally will be more as temperature increases volume increases as temperature increases so this beta is a positive term and we define isothermal compressibility where we say that the temperature is constant and pressure is uh, you know impacting V. So, as pressure increases, V decreases. So, this is your isothermal compressibility. In both the terms, we have divided it with V so that we can, you know, convert it into a proper mathematics. So, 1 by V, that is the, you know, the ratio of change in volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure to the total volume and change in volume of, uh, you know, fluid with respect to pressure at a constant temperature divided by V that is kappa. So, this is beta, this is kappa and when we substitute them here, the equation would become this. Alright. So, we divide this ent entire equation with V and we get this because this becomes beta and this becomes kappa. <coughs> so, this is the equation where volume is littered with pressure and temperature. So, if pressure temperature changes, you can see how volume changes. So, the isotherms for the liquid phase on the left hand side of PV diagram are very slip, steep and are close. So, th these are the diagrams. These are very steep, right? So, these are nothing but change in volume with respect to pressure at constant temperature. These are almost zero. That is what that line says, right? Right. So, they are more, both small for liquid and hence beta and kappa are both small. For incompressible, incompressible fluids, beta and kappa are 0. However, we do not have any true incompressible fluid and hence beta and kappa would be less. Right? There are some exceptions about beta and kappa which we are not discussing in this video. But beta and kappa generally would be small for liquid phase. So, at condition not close to the critical uh, temperature and pressure, beta and kappa are weak functions of temperature and pressure. So, they do not vary along with temperature and pressure. Actually, they are the function of temperature and pressure. You just see, beta is defined as change in volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure. So, the moment I change the pressure, 
this variation would change right but if the range of pressure is away from critical point the variation in volume with respect to temperature is not much so numerical value will not be very different same is the case with change in volume with respect to pressure at constant temperature so though they are function they are weak function and if they are weak function for all practical purposes you can ignore them and consider like ignore them ignore their dependency on temperature and pressure and you can consider them to be constant and you can find that ln v2 by v1 is this so if i want to find out change in volume when the temperature is changing and pressure is changing this is the equation so this is the simplest of all possible equation which can be applied to liquid phase when we consider beta and kappa both independent of the temperature and pressure so the next uh, topic in this particular uh, you know, video is virial equation of state so virial equation of state is equation of state which is applicable to the gaseous side gaseous uh, you know phase of the diagram you concentrate here all these isotherms they are having a similar characteristics as far as their behavior of pressure as a function of volume is concerned just like for the liquid phase they are all very steep and close these are you know kind of series or expansion series in pressure so you can you can just write them as uh, you know a mathematical form of expansion series so we'll see that as we proceed further so isotherm for gases and vapors lying above and to the right of cd of uh, you know pv diagram that is cd means this right are relatively simple curves for which v decreases as p increases so they are directly uh, you know uh, decreasing in volume as pressure increases so here the product pv for a given temperature should be nearly constant right then for only p or v so we try to relate product pv so the product pv for an isotherm can be expressed as a power series in p so this is the power series i was talking about so pv can be represented as, uh, represented as a plus bp plus cp square plus dp to the power 3 right now if we do some mathematical manipulation so that we can arrive at certain you know specific equation and we write small b as ab dash small c as st dash right so we incorporate a in every term which contains p so if we do that what we can write is we can replace this with ab dash replace this with ac dash and then if here it is d we can replace that with ad dash and likewise i can take out a common and my ongoing equation would become this pv is equal to a plus a into 1 plus b dash p plus c dash p square plus d dash e to the power 3 here a b dash c dash are constants for a given temperature and the given fluid or given chemical species the right hand side is an infinite series but in practice we can restrict it to a finite terms maybe 2 or maximum 3 we don't need to go beyond that and for low pressure truncation after two terms yield satisfactory result so if the pressure is not very high you can you know restrict yourself only to the second term so there are two different forms of virial equation of state right and to arrive at that we first define a thermodynamic property which has an equation this so this is known as compressibility factor compressibility factor is nothing but the ratio of two volumes actual volume to ideal gas volume and ideal gas volume we know is given by rt by p so this is v divided by rt by p and hence z is equal to pv by rt correct okay so this dimensionless ratio is called the compressibility factor and gives you idea about the deviation from ideal gas behavior so with this definition and with a equal to rt in the previous equation that is in this equation if i replace a with rt right we get this now how do you arrive at a equal to rt we need to just have a look at that 
So, very quickly we will discuss that how did we arrive at a equal to rt, right. So, what was done by the scientist was this. Practical values of z at as a function of pressure at you know specified temperature was obtained for different gases. I will just redraw them because I have not been able to do it properly. So, let us say this is fluid 1, this is fluid 2 and this is fluid 3, Z and P. So, for a fixed temperature, you measure Z as a function of P. How do you measure Z? So, for given temperature, you vary pressure and you get the value of volume, right. So, this you get experimentally. And from this data, you can get Z equals to PV by RT. So, now you have got expression or the values for Z and P. So, you plot Z as a function of P for fluid 1. Similarly, do it for fluid 2. Similarly, for fluid 3. And plot them on this graph. And what, uh, you know, the researchers realized that all the fluids, when extended towards Z equals to P equals to 0, to same point and this point they termed as A. Then for the same fluids, they change the temperature from T to T1, right? And what they found is a similar behavior. Only thing now is the value of A changed. But for all the three fluids, they got the same value A for the new temperature as well. So, then they realize that A is proportional to temperature. This is one. Second thing is A in this equation is independent of the fluid under consideration. For any given fluid, the A value depends only on temperature. So, A is proportional to T and that proportionality constant introduced was R. So, A is equal to RT. So, when I substitute A equals to RT, my equation would become this. How? See, I substitute A equal to RT here, RT if I take on this side, it will become Z equal to 1 plus B dash P plus C dash P square plus D dash P to the power 3. So, this is in form of pressure. Similarly, in the form of volume, because we know pressure and volume are inversely proportional, proportional to each other, we can write Z equal to 1 plus B by V plus C by V square plus D upon V cube. So, what we have seen in two equations, they are z is equal to 1 plus b dash p plus c dash p square plus d dash p to the power 3 and z is equal to 1 plus b by v plus c by v square plus d upon v cube. And apart from that, what we have seen is how we can develop a equation of state from PVT basic behavior for a liquid phase, right. So, when we meet next time, we will talk more about this B, C, D that is the parameters of virial equation of state and how to utilize virial equation of state for calculating the volume or how do we use that in PVT behavior understanding. Thank you.